now. Great reflexes. I want to go at the heart of the trilogy, Peter and MJ. Now dig on this. People who hurt other people generally don't see themselves as bad people, they see themselves as the good guy. He hit her, he yelled at her, he did things deliberately to hurt her. That was inside of him, and that's the darkness that we all have to deal with. And I love the idea that Peter and MJ had to work at it for a long time. It wrapped the story up in a really emotionally true way. Pizza time. Hello and welcome to Cinema Therapy. I'm Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist, and I love movies. My name's Alan Seawright. I'm a professional filmmaker, and I need therapy, but he's not my therapist, because that would be a conflict of interest, because we're best friends. This year, because of the success of Spider-Man No Way Home and the upcoming release of the sequel to one of my favorite films of all time, Into the Spider-Verse, mm -hmm. we've dubbed this the Year of the Spider. It's that weird Chinese calendar year that no one's ever heard of before. Okay. <laughs> By the way, this is Gandalf. He's our co-pilot on this and probably many future episodes. He's very sweet. He's a good boy. So today we were gonna do Psychology of a Hero on Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man and then your wife had a stroke of absolute, one, it was a stroke of brilliance, two, I was deeply ashamed I didn't think of this <laughs> like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, so she had the idea that we should do movie couples therapy mm -hmm. for couples in movies. And the themes of heroism and sacrifice and redemption throughout this trilogy are amazing. Really But good. they've been explored before. Mm -hmm. I want to go at the thing that just drives people nuts. The nails on the blackboard of Peter and MJ. You're taller than you look. I hunch. Because one of the things that actually resonated with me most about Spider-Man No Way Home is when Peter is having a conversation with other Peter and says, Took a while, but we made it work. Yeah. Yeah. Me and MJ. It's a beautiful moment. Yeah, and what's awesome, and I, you know, frankly, look, there's a lot of this that's cringe, but I still care about the relationship. Like, I still sure. connect with it. It's the heart of the trilogy. And then, like, a pumpkin bomb is dropped on it in Spidey 3, mm -hmm. which challenges the innate sweetness of their relationship and even Peter's goodness itself. It's a really interesting place to go, but it's a bummer way to, like, close a trilogy. But the bomb that gets dropped is also kind of my favorite part of the whole trilogy. Like, it's is, really fun. Is Emo Peter? Emo Peter is so much fun. They love me. Right out of the gate, Alan and I are unapologetically huge fans of Toby's performance as... Oh, Emo. yeah. No, everyone else was hating on it back in, what was this, 07 when yeah, it came yeah. out? Everybody was hating on it, and Jono and I were the two people shouting from the rooftops, this is the greatest scene ever! <laughs> Thanks, Hot Mics. So we're going to talk about Peter and MJ, how they get together, and what they have to come back from, and what it takes to actually heal a relationship. Uh, could this relationship be healed after all the garbage that happens in Spider-Man 3? I'm sort of his unofficial photographer. Uh, has he mentioned me? Yeah. What'd he say? Uh, I said... Uh, he, he, he asked me... Come on, she can't be clueless that he's crazy about her. And what did you say? I said... Um... Uh, Spider-Man? I said... <laughs> Uh, the, the great thing about MJ is when you look in her eyes and she's looking back in yours. I gotta say, I don't super love Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. I love this scene. Yeah. And this is why Alvin Sargent got paid a lot of money to write these. And weaker at the same time. Someone making you feel stronger and weaker at the same time, like that is, I can it's relate to that. pretty good writing. At the same time, terrified. The truth is, you, you don't know what you feel, except you know what kind of man you wanna be. I love that. It's as if you've reached the unreachable and you weren't ready for it. You said that. <laughs> oh, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this Aunt May. I love her. 
Now, a lot of fans dump on MJ, hate MJ from just kind of bouncing from guy to guy. You know, because she starts with Flash, and then she goes to Harry, and then she goes to she's totally into Spider Man, and now she's having feelings for Peter, and that's all in one movie, mm -hmm. much less like the rest of the trilogy. Yeah. Like, but here's I actually have great sympathy for her. She comes from an abusive home, yeah. and she's looking for validation through male yep. praise and acceptance. Like to me, that's actually absolutely in character. But if I were doing couples therapy with them at this point, well, it's not they're not a couple, but I'd start with Peter. Peter, you're telling like this arm's length story about what you said to Spider-Man instead of just telling her how you feel about her. And we do this sometimes, not in this type of way. But well, we, most of us aren't written by Alvin Sargent. No. <laughs> I've never said anything half that clever or like full of pathos. And He has looked at Megan with doughy blue eyes, though. Doughy? Dewey. Also doughy blue eyes. <laughs> Uh, later on, though, MJ's declaration in the graveyard is much more straightforward, much more direct. There was only one person who I was thinking of, and it wasn't who I thought it'd be. It was you, Pete. And the fact is, like, we don't risk expressing our feelings because we're afraid of it blowing up in our face. But at a certain point, like, you just gotta know. Yeah. Like, you, you just gotta say it, because if the answer's no, it'll hurt, but then you can move on. Yep. Now he's gonna try and tell her how he feels, and then he runs out of quarters. You young people will never understand this. You'll never know the pain. Of doing a call and not having any more quarters. I wanna tell you the truth. Here it is. I'm Spider-Man. Weird, huh? <laughs> now you know why I can't be with you. If my enemies found out about you, if you got hurt, I could never forgive myself. So... Protecting. I wish I could tell you how I feel about you. So he's protecting her instead of trusting her. Yeah. And the issue with that is that secrets either ruin relationships or keep them from starting in the first place. Right. And we saw this all throughout the Twilight Saga. I don't want you. Where Edward kept protecting Bella instead of trusting her. You're just not good for me. And when it comes to expressing your feelings and risking it, like as Sophie likes to say, risk it for the biscuit. Risk it for the biscuit. Risk it for the biscuit. It is imperative that you take that risk, because not only no risk, no reward, but no risk, no move on with your life if it doesn't work out for you. He thinks it comes from a place of love, but he's actually disrespecting her Yeah. by not allowing her to make that choice. One thing that I love about that scene that <clears throat> you wouldn't think about because it just feels completely natural, the camera is on a circular dolly track, right? It's yeah. going all the way around him. A lot of times when you see that in film where the camera's going all the way around somebody, the camera is playing their mental state of I've turned around and I'm seeing something else. Yeah. Or I'm seeing it from a new direction. Yeah. What Tobey Maguire did in that, that was actually a really great piece of acting, feels completely natural. You'd never notice. He's keeping his face to the camera basically the entire time. Yeah. He delivers like three words where you can't see his face and then he still gets into profile. Yeah. He just had to emote and deliver maybe the most pathos-filled little speech of the entire film. Yeah. That's some, that's some fine acting, sir. Very Batman Forever. Both of the men I love are the same man. Hi. Hi. This is really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in the theater that got the biggest oh, laugh. Huge laugh. I gotta say, when I say that Tobey Maguire is my least favorite Peter Parker, he's still good. I like him. Yeah. That was phenomenal. You, die. you do love me. I do. Even though you said you didn't. So I throw this in here because... ruh -roh. <laughs> <laughs> But I threw this in here because, I mean, he's unmasked and so she sure. sees, but like, he's finally real and vulnerable because he could have easily said, like not said in case we die, like he could have not confessed. Yeah. I don't know why we put so much fear into these situations. Uh, I know why, because it's scary as hell. That's why. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah. Because you're putting yourself out there and this person could theoretically crush your hopes and dreams. Uh, and if you haven't had your hopes and dreams crushed a whole bunch of times and you don't know how that feels, you worry that it might destroy you. Yeah. Just no. go into film and you'll have your hopes and dreams crushed all the time and then you'll get used to it. It stops stinging after a while. Yeah. It just like, feels like a <laughs> Thursday. That's so sad. <laughs> I think I always knew. All this time. I love how quick he whipped that web together. Oh, you really were. And you know why we can't be together. I love how Danny Elfman is a genius. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man. Slash great detective. Memories. I can't let you take that risk. Stop it, Edward. I will. It all comes back to Twilight. Always be Spider-Man comes back to twilight you and i can never be half of that statement was true yep like he knew this whole movie is about him who is he going to be right is he going to be peter is he going to be spider-man mm -hmm. and he realizes like the whole great power great responsibility being a hero and helping people is what brings me the greatest fulfillment and if i don't use my talents for this purpose i can't live with myself right right there are times like you know who you're going to be and so the person who's going to be with you has to be on board with that. Yeah. I knew I wanted to be a therapist and I actually, there were a couple of people who weren't especially into that. Mm -hmm. They were looking for doctors or lawyers or dentists because yeah, because of the cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> when I met Alicia, she told me, I'm just looking for a good man. Mm -hmm. I can make my own money. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, sugar mama. Yeah. You didn't realize she was going to put you to work though. Did you? I knew. <laughs> that was so high pitched. <laughs> Whoa. My spidey sense is tingling. Had to do what I had to do. Mary Jane. Peter. I can't survive without you. Sweet, but a little cheesy. Mm-hmm. It's because Spider-Man saves your life all the time. You shouldn't be here. I know you think we can't be together. But can't you respect me enough to let me make my own decisions? Yes! I know there will be risks, but I want to face them with you. It's wrong that we should only be half alive half of ourselves. I love you. So here I am, standing in your doorway. I've always been standing in your doorway. The scene is half awesome, half cheesy, but there's a great line right here. Isn't it about time somebody saved your life? I love that That is line. a great line. <laughs> Isn't it about time somebody saved your life? So good. I don't want to belabor the point, but exactly what I would tell him as a therapist, respect me enough to let me make my own decision. Yup. So right here, this is like a perfect ha American happy ending. They all live happily oh, yeah, ever after. No, this you know, is, hey, we did it. It's fairy tale. And then we get to Spider-Man 3, which takes us to some daring places. Spider-Man 3 takes a lot of risks. Sure does. Some of them pay off, kind of. Some of them definitely do not, but the idea that you can get lost in your own hubris. And we get, we see a Peter who, after years of being the dweeb that everyone steps on, now he's the hero and it really just goes to his head. And he does the upside down kiss oh, with Gwen. Yeah. It hurts. It hurts. So now Peter's lost in his own hubris and. This is what happens. How oh, would you like some champagne? How'd that get in there? <laughs> so dorky. Oh, don't cry. <laughs> oh, man. Spider-Man 3, for all its flaws, has Toby's best performance. Oh, Hi. easily. <laughs> He's really having fun. It's you. Wow, beautiful. Thanks. I mean, honestly, it gives him the most to play. I think that's why he was having more fun with it. He's yeah. probably a lot more loose in the character that's at that point, too. special occasion. You're on Broadway? I don't feel like much of a star tonight. Well, you are a star, and you've earned it. Peter, you have no idea how I feel right now. No, no, I, I, I know exactly how you feel. Listen, I have been through this. It happens to me all the time. 
I see Spider-Man posters in the window. The kids running around with me on their sweaters. It's a big Halloween item. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I've become something of an icon. Like yesterday, they kept screaming, so Spider-Man. He doesn't even realize how far into ego he is. He yeah. thinks he's being helpful because he sees they're on the same footing. He thinks she's a star on Broadway. He's a superstar superhero. Mm -hmm. Hello. But that he doesn't even cross his mind. MJ was in the audience and she saw me do the upside down kiss. Oh, oh it's so nice to finally meet you. Pete talks about you all the time. It's starting to dawn on him a little oh. bit there. Gwen is my lab partner in Dr. Connor's class. Pete's something of a genius. I'd be completely lost without him, which actually... And I can it. own up to a similar thing. Um, some of it's hubris, but a lot of it is... I mean, I, I'm not blind. I'm not immune to ego. Sure. I'm human like anybody else. But a lot of it is just getting lost in my own dreams, the, own, the things yeah. that I want, the, the things that I'm going for, and just kind of assuming that the person I'm with is totally cool with it. Mm -hmm. Um... And not only cool with it, but that they're glad to be along for the ride because I'm, I'm such a big deal, you know? Ooh, and yeah. She thinks you're a genius and she had her polished fingernails all over you? Or didn't you notice? And she gave Spider-Man the key to the city. I've made that exact face as a husband so many times. Uh, <laughs> as my wife is like laying out uh, offenses that I didn't realize that I committed. And I'm like, that's true. That is also true. Let me ask you something. When you kissed her... Who was kissing her? Spider-Man or Peter? What do you mean? You know exactly what I mean. That was our kiss. Why would you do that? That is a valid question. You must have known how it'd make me feel. Do you want to push me away? Push you away? Why would I want to push you away? I love you. You're my girlfriend. She's a girl in my class, MJ. So what I would tell Peter right here is instead of trying to reassure her by telling her why she's mistaken, start by taking accountability. Yeah, don't get defensive. And and then acknowledge why she has every right to feel the way she's feeling. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, and that's exactly what he's doing, like we want to reassure the other person that's not what it is, it's not what you think it is, that wasn't my intention. And we lead with that, but what they're hearing is, you're crazy, or you're stupid, or how could you think that, or you're wrong. And accountability, responsibility, empathy is the only way out of a jam. So how do you feel about, because everybody, you always hear this advice, don't go to bed angry. Is that good advice, or is it sometimes okay to go to bed angry if you know you're going to deal with it tomorrow? It's, it's better to go to bed angry if you're exhausted because trying to have a productive conversation when you're exhausted and emotional is going to get ugly as hell. Knew it! Yeah. I knew it! I got that advice, and the second I heard it, I was like, that seems dumb. <laughs> well, like, emo and jazz club. Emo and jazz, come like, on. What is, How can you not love this? Peter? <laughs> and also, if you step away... This is for you. <laughs> if you step away from like character, if you don't like what's going on with the character and you just appreciate Toby Maguire as an actor. Oh, man. Thanks. And also, I mean, sort of the whole point of this is his dancing is a you know, a bit dorky and obviously he's got some wire help and stuff with this, but this is some pretty athletic. Yeah, he's doing almost all of this. Pretty Talented stuff. He's not as good as Tom Holland, who is friggin' phenomenal, but. And the camera's moving. <laughs> Blowing the hair! <laughs> Such a Sam Raimi touch. Now dig on this. <laughs> and it cracks me up that Gwen Stacy's totally into it. Like, alternately, women oh, yeah. think he's cool or think he's like a total put off. Like, they just. So, but this is realistic behavior using someone else to make your ex jealous. Sure. Which is super messed up. Easy, whoa. She can outrun a T-Rex, but she can't outrun Toby's libido. <laughs> <laughs> She's also a phenomenal director, BT she is. Dubs. Really good.
That is a great piece of work from Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, it is. She is a phenomenal director. I just couldn't resist the joke. Yeah, no, obviously. I mean, <laughs> come on. It was sitting right there. Just had to pick it up. You all right, Mary Jane? You will always be the creep, okay. though, if you're using someone else to make someone jealous. It never is going to make you look good. Hey. What's wrong with you? You. Oh my Can God. I help you, sir? No. Is everything okay here, Paul? Yeah. Everything okay here, Paul? Take him out of here. Let's go, sir. Take your hand off of me. Now. Okay. Make If you hit your partner when you're drunk, is there redemption for that? Or should they just be done with you? Mm. Honestly, that's a tough call. I, I can just see people sounding off in the comments right now. Like, no, you should be done. 100% done. If My there's abuse when the addiction is no longer in play as an addict, I can tell you, uh, I hurt people when I was using. Yeah. And when I'm not using, I don't. Yeah. I am very grateful for the grace and forgiveness that I've gotten from the people in my life since I've been clean. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say to the person who was abused, yeah. this is completely in your court. There will be people who, should, who tell you that you should stick it out and stick around because you're married and you've made a promise and a covenant with each other. And there are people who will tell you you should absolutely 100% be done. And everyone's going to be <laughs> shouting in your ears projecting onto you what they think is the right thing because yeah. this is what they would do in this situation, right. which a lot of them haven't been in the situation. Right. Um, I would say ongoing abuse, like be done. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty hard and fast rule. And then there are some things that you don't, people forgive, but they can't forget, right? They can't, we can't have a relationship after this. There's no coming back from this. I can hope that you get clean. Yeah. I can hope that you get your head on straight, but it's not, it doesn't feel safe for me here. And there's too much pain. And that is 100% valid. Yep. A harder thing for me to say, because there's going to be a lot of people who hate that I say this, I've known couples where there was addiction and where there was abuse, and they got cleaned up, and the abuse, and, and they were able to like turn it around and create something completely new and different and beautiful, mm -hmm. and they were glad they stayed. Yeah. And then the third hard layer of that is there are people in unhealthy relationships who hear what I just said. And think, oh, if I stick it out, yeah, he or she will get sober or get well. Yeah. And it'll all be great. And that might not be true either. Yeah. And then you hear these stories of hope from other people. And those stories of hope actually keep you in a relationship far longer than you should be. Absolutely. You know? And the fact is, there is no... So what you're saying is, it's all real messy. <laughs> it's all real messy. And it's it's... So what would I say? I do love the scene in the church where he's banging on the bell and just how hard it is to get the suit off, you know, and where he's pounding on the floor just trying to get it off of him. I think that's great symbolism. Uh, I would say to him, you've got to get clean. You've got to get your head on straight and you've got to accept the consequences for your actions, which means that if MJ decides she's done with you, that's those are, it. Those are choices you made. Yeah. You can't say, you have to stay with me. We're destined to be together. We have all this history. Please... You can say, I would like for you to stay. Mm -hmm. I understand if you can't. Yep. And to MJ, I would say, okay, well, let's see what, what where Peter is. Because at the end of the film, he comes in to take her hand. And she was hurting, but she reached out and took his hand anyway. And that always didn't sit super well with me as an ending to a trilogy. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be hopeful, but it's like, okay, they're going to work things out. But man, like he hit her. Yeah. He yelled at her. He yeah. did things deliberately to hurt her uh, emotionally. Fun fact, this wasn't the end of a trilogy. There was supposed to be a fourth film. Yeah. It wasn't a great place to end 
that story, their relationship, and yeah. we we get you know a couple of lines of dialogue that that wrap it up in a really classy way. You have someone? No. <sighs> I got no time for uh, Peter Parker stuff. You know. Do you? Uh, that's a little complicated. No, I understand. I guess it's just not in the cards for guys like us. Well, I wouldn't give up. It took a while, but we made it work. Yeah? Yeah, me and MJ. My MJ, uh, it gets confusing here. <laughs> <laughs> The notion that after Peter spent all of Spider-Man 3 dismantling all of the goodwill he'd built up in in Spider-Man 1 and 2, I didn't like seeing him go there. Right. And No Way Home made it awesome. Well, not awesome that he went there, but it it wrapped the story up in a really... uh, in a really emotionally true way. Yeah. Like when when he sees sees, uh, Octavius and he says, how are you, my boy? And he goes, trying to do better. I can relate to seeing myself as a good person and being so wrapped up in my own idea of my own goodness that I have been blind to the damage that I've been doing to other people. And the hardest thing is people who hurt other people generally don't see themselves as bad people. They see themselves as the good guy. And I saw a lot of other people do it. But once I did it, I was like, oh. Oh, no. Yeah. And suddenly I really, really attached to this. And I love the idea that Peter and MJ had to work at it for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I imagine they went to therapy. Probably. You know, which means there's a therapist out there who is completely HIPAA compliant, who knows that Peter is Spider-Man and can't tell anybody. Dude, I think we've found your perfect job. <laughs> Superhero therapist? Superhero therapist. <laughs> <clears throat> what a great relationship. <laughs> <laughs> No. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for this couples therapy session with Peter and MJ. What other movie couples do you want this man to give therapy to uh, and me to talk about some movie bullshit? (laughs) So until next time. Hey, hot legs. Find us some shade. Look at little director Junior. Gonna cry? Maybe. And watch Watch movies. movies. (laughs) So sad. Oh, he is gonna cry. Look at little Goblin Jr. Gonna cry? I'm gonna put some dirt in your eye. You got any more nuts? Go make me some. Find us some shade. It's you who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. Wrong answer!